Hey guys, welcome back to Keys to the Cosmos. We are in part three of our three-part series of the Ultimate Starter Traveling Setup Kit for Astrophotography. As we've mentioned, simple, simple astrophotography um, that produces great results. So in this third part, uh, we're gonna we're gonna highlight sort of um, upgrades, some that I find essential, maybe some that aren't as much, but we'll talk about that, and accessories as well. So a lot of them are what I would consider essential to uh, reducing frustration and enabling you to get the best results possible. So we talked about in the first part, um, and I mentioned this upgraded wedge that you'll notice right away. Now, as I mentioned, the stock wedge on a Star Adventure or even an Ioptron Skyguider, they are perfectly uh, fine. You know, they're adequate. I wouldn't say there's a flaw in them or anything like that, but you will notice there is a little bit of shift, a little bit of you know, instability there with those. And as I mentioned, the more stable and rock solid you can get this foundation, the better your images are. You can have the best telescope and camera in the world, but if it's not on a solid mount and star tracker, it doesn't matter one bit. You're not going to get good images. So um, in the case of this, I had read a little bit about it. This is a William Optics uh, upgraded um, wedge or base for the star tracker unit. And it's hard to explain, hard to see in the video, but when you see it in person, when you feel the weight difference, the quality of the machining, uh, the quality of the screws for adjustments when it comes to polar aligning, it's very obvious. And although I won't go as far as say it's essential, if you can afford it in your budget, I absolutely suggest that you get it. It's really amazing and I love it. And I just feel that much more safe and secure with my you know, nice telescope and camera on top, knowing it's uh, very stable. The next thing we'll talk about is the camera itself. Um, we mentioned a little bit, but um, Astro modifying your camera, it's a big debate. A lot of guys will say yes, some say no. In my opinion, there's a few things to keep in mind, to consider. So for me, as I mentioned, I was not into photography at all. I didn't buy this camera with the intent to use it for vacations or anything like that. It was simply for astrophotography. Uh, this one happened to have it done already. So I can't say that I've taken images with a stock DSLR. But I've done a lot of research, read a lot, and a lot of guys say the difference who started with one unmodified and went to modified, it's night and day. And the reason is that um, when we're taking pictures of targets in the night sky, most of them, I would say 90% plus, are hydrogen alpha based. So that's red, that red gas that you see in a lot of images. Red gas like this one here. This is the horse head. And, um, you know, very well-known and shot target, but you see all the red in that picture. That's the kind of uh, hydrogen alpha we're trying to pick up in our images. And that's what will really help you to do that. And it's not crazy expensive um, to have a pro professional do it. I believe it's around $160 Canadian. And um, you can do it yourself, but uh, if you're like me, not overly technical, don't recommend it. A lot of small screws, tweezers, all that stuff. Not for me. I'd rather pay someone to do it right. And, um, you know, that's what removes that filter, allows that red in, what would normally block out red eye and stuff like that, but that you don't want in portraits and stuff like that. With astrophotography, we want the red. We want as much color coming in as possible. So, not essential. Definitely, if you have a DSLR already, use it. Use it stock. Um, but if you know you're going to be dedicating to astrophotography, why not do it? It's not a crazy expense. Get a professional to do it, and then you don't have to worry about it, and you'll see how amazing uh, the images are. Now, a couple of accessories to mention. You'll notice there's a band on the, the top of the, the end of the refractor there. That's a dew heater, just like a windshield of a car that quickly frosts over and cold when there's no heat inside. Um, same thing will happen to your lens, and obviously that's a bad thing when you're trying to take pictures. If you live in Toronto, like I do, or a cold area, or even where there's a lot of uh, dew, a lot of humidity and dew, that is absolutely essential. I recommend everyone buy one. Um, it's the only thing that involves a wire on my kit, really. Um, so it runs off USB power, this particular one. It's very cheap. I think it was around $35 on Amazon. Highly recommend it. And uh, you'll see that it keeps, it enables you to take pictures for quite some time without having to worry about frost or dew. The next one here with its fancy elastics and twist ties is my laser pointer. Now, when you're using a kit like this, the biggest drawback I would say is not having that expensive go-to mount that a lot of guys you see use and um, that you're able to align and then it simply finds the night objects for you. With a kit like this, 
you got to find them yourself. And as annoying and frustrating can be, it's also a good thing because it teaches you the night sky, which is something that I enjoy. But without that laser pointer, it is next to impossible. I'll tell you now, the first time I went out, I didn't have it. All I could do was look through the camera, try looking at a dark night sky that has very few stars like here in Toronto. It's uh, next to impossible. So with that laser pointer, you don't need to get down and even look um, you know, through the camera. You can just stand and hold it. You move it along the declination or the axis, I should say, the RA axis, and you can just press the button and it shoots that laser up and you can see, assuming it's lined up with the telescope and securely in position, you can see exactly where you're pointing and then make your adjustments. So it is uh, what I would consider essential with a kit like this. And then just a couple other small uh, accessories before we talk about power, and that is, um, you notice this mount here, the green mount. This actually comes with the Star Adventure if you buy the astrophotography version. And I do recommend you do that because that's what allows you to put a telescope on top. It also provides you with a weight for balancing the weight of the telescope on the opposite end. You may need a second weight here that you can purchase. Not crazy expensive, but I would recommend that, especially if you're putting this size of a refractor on top. And on top of the mount, I've actually um, installed this ADM mount plate. Not essential at all, not expensive, but you may not want to bother, but I, I tried it only because um, even though there's no motor on the declination axis, the one that turns this way, you still want to have a balance. You don't want to have all the weight on one side, which is the case here with the camera and the focal reducer inside here. So that allows you to be able to actually have a lot more play to be able to push the telescope up and get that weight from the very back to more towards the middle and therefore um, better balanced and better, easier for the, the star tracker to sort of move with the night sky without any resistance that's not necessary and take better images. So not necessary, but it, it is nice to have. And um, I've only used it a couple nights, but I like it so far. It's also easier just to get the telescope in quick. You can open it right up, plop it in, and then just there's two big, big knobs here that are easy to grab even with gloves on, and you can secure it in place. Now, the main thing, and what separates this from a lot of setups out there for simple and easy to move around to travel with is power. You know, it's a lot of complicated kits. They, these guys, not only they have wires all over, but you got to bring these big batteries out with them and, you know, and worry about power. With this one, all we need to worry about is powering, the, as we mentioned, the dew heater that runs off a of USB, hence the cord. And also I like to power the Star Trek. Now this does run off batteries. I believe it's four double A's and that's fine. You can do it that way and, and worry one less wire here. But it is one more thing to worry about. You might forget to bring batteries and then you've already run, used it one or two nights and it dies on you. And then you're done for the night. So I like, to, I always have batteries in it, but I like to power it. It's just a simple cord that I believe uses a USB-C, which plugs into the unit itself. And then that plugs, the other end plugs into a USB port. And to power that and the dew heater, I simply use one of these, a USB power pack. It's pretty small, pretty light. You notice there, there's a couple uh, uh, ports there for the USB and it just plugs right in. And uh, this will power your, your rig all night easily, four or five hours, no problem. It's 26,800 milliamp hours, which is the, basically, from what I understand, the maximum capacity you can have and still travel with it. So that's nice. If you're planning to bring this somewhere, you can actually bring that on the plane with you and not have to worry about it. And at the same time, it provides a lot of power. These are cheap. I think this was around $30, $35 on Amazon. You power it up the night before and um, it's good to go. You don't need to worry about it. You plug those in and you're good to go. It powers the Star Adventure. You don't need to worry about the, the batteries then. The other thing, the only other thing you need to worry about batteries other than the camera, which should come with a rechargeable one and should last you for a good chunk of the night and not worry about any wires is the intervalometer. And the intervalometer um, is what I would consider essential. And the reason is you can imagine if we had to press the shutter button every time we want to take a picture, well, what does that do? It introduces vibration into the system and we don't want that. This whole thing is about stability. So we need a wireless shutter release. So that's what this does. This is the um, the unit here, that re the receiver unit. So this just goes on to the stock bracket on the camera and it plugs into the camera itself. It's got 
few little AAA batteries, but those will last you months. And then we have the wireless unit in, unit in this case. I like to have a wireless unit. And not only is it good because it's got that sort of wireless shutter release, but also you can program your imaging session. So you can say, um, you know, maybe you've just been fiddling with the telescope and you want to, to wait a minute before it starts imaging to let all that vibration settle. You can say delay for one minute, then take one minute exposures, five seconds in between 150 exposures and just press start. And it'll wait that minute, it'll start taking one minute exposures, five seconds in between, 150 of them. And so you don't even need to touch it. Once that star tracker is polar aligned, you got your target, you turned it on, you set your exposures, you just press the button and you can walk away for a bit. I do recommend coming back to check to make sure, I always do, but this is definitely an essential accessory that you need with a kit like this, an intervalometer, not crazy expensive, and um, definitely will make your night that much easier. A couple of little things as well for focusing a bad knob mask. Um, there's lots of videos on these. I consider this essential, not expensive, goes right on the end of the telescope. And what that does is it sort of puts this, um, you'll see, I'll put the picture up here. There's uh, two lines that, are, that make a cross, like a sort of an X. And then you see that line going through the middle. When that line is directly through the middle, you know it's in focus. So what I do is I put it on, I point it at a medium to bright star, and I take about an eight or nine sec second image. And then you'll see that middle line is either towards the middle or it'll be up or down. So if it's up or down, it's out of focus. So you, what you need to do is, uh, adjust the focus knob here, even just minor adjustments. Take another sample image. You'll see that it moved. If it moved down, you got to do some more, bring it down to the center. If it, went, if it needs to go up, you adjust it the other way. You'll take another image, it'll go up. You keep doing that until you see it dead center. And then you know you're in focus. Don't need to worry about it anymore. And uh, you take the bad knob mask off and you start your imaging. So definitely, bad knob mask is essential. Another little thing I like to use especially if you're imaging near a busy street. These are just like furniture suppression pads. They're just foam. These are cheap, again, on Amazon, 10, 12 bucks. Uh, I have three of them. They go underneath the feet of the tripod just to help eliminate any vibration that we don't want. And if you're walking around it a little bit, you don't need to worry as much um, with these pads. So these are super cheap, but I recommend them as well. And one more thing that I should mention, this is not a little thing. So we talked about what to spend money on, right? Definitely a tripod. Get a good tripod. Um, star trackers are all around the same. Doesn't really matter. They all work well. Camera and telescope, again, you just, they are the most expensive part, but you don't need to buy high end of either at all. I think you should start with basic. basic. As long as we mentioned the telescope is an ap apple chromatic, it's important. But other than that, get a doublet, get a used one, even if it's 10, 15 years old. Don't worry, it'll do a great job. Same with the camera. But if you're in a light polluted city like I am here in Toronto, you need a light pollution filter. It is essential, trust me. Um, there is where you spend money because you'll see ones for $30 and you'll see one for well over a thousand. Not saying spend over a thousand, I haven't myself. I think that's a little crazy, but get a good quality one, a narrow band um, like this Optolong L Extreme. Uh, these things are game changers, unbelievable. I'll make a whole video on filters still, but. This is absolutely essential. Before you even go out, uh, I would spend the money on this if you can. Um, there are ones that are a little bit cheaper. Here's a SkyTech. Um, this is about half the price. C uh, CLS CCD, but you'll see the difference right away. Wow, this 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 Optolong is incredible. Blocks out all the street lights. I can shoot beside a full moon, no problem. This is something I would definitely put up there with within the range of items, spend the money on it. Don't go crazy with the over a thousand, not right away, um, but get a good quality one. You will not regret it. So there it is. There's our overview of the setup here. Um, and this is, you know, what I consider the ultimate setup. Um, as I make improvements or if I do, I'll, I'll make a video about it. But so far, everything here, it just works. You know, and that's what you want. It's not overly complicated. There's no wires. It's just these two wires, and this one's not even necessary, but I, I use it. And you can travel with this, and you can quickly set up. That's when something you can quickly set up. If you know it's going to take you an hour to get all that out, all the wires and the computer and all that, you may not do it as much as you want to. But when you're getting started, a setup like this is just amazing. And uh, I think it's, like I said, the ultimate starter travel setup. And I hope it works for you. 
So thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, if you enjoyed what you saw, please like, subscribe, uh, turn on notifications as well. We're going to have a lot more videos about, uh, I'm going to make another one about what to do before you even go out for your first imaging session. And uh, we'll have a lot more coming in the future. We'll go outside a little bit. I'll show you outside as I'm shooting. We'll have some unboxings and a lot more. So a lot to look forward to. Thanks again, guys. See you on the next one.